I'm Laverne Pivio from The Blaze TV, and this is Wide Awake. Now, I want to welcome you to our Dallas Treehouse, not to be confused with the Liberty Treehouse, also known as the Loft, the Platform, but it's basically where we do the bulk of our live hosted commercials for the network. Now, when I last left you, I promised to explain to you how I ripped Glenn off for a great idea and how it took on a life of its own. But to do that, we got to step back a little over a year ago, actually at the end of 2012, beginning of 2013. Just like a lot of people, most people, I was reflecting on the year that had passed, thinking about the year to come. And I'm a writer, so I wanted to write a few lines about it, but it had been a really rough year and I had nothing. I thought for days on how to kind of sum it up. And I finally, well, I, I finally actually wrote this. Turn the page comes to mind today. I've tried many times to find something to write as I reflect on 2012, but the words aren't there. All that comes to mind is a do. It's a year burned into stone in a way I could have never imagined as it began. So as this year ends and another begins, I simply say again, as I have many times over the past year, Los Dio, I trust you, Lord. I'm ready to turn the page. Los Dio. That is what I ripped off from Glenn. And I know it's not original, it's not something he came up with, but the first time I saw it to wonder what it meant was in a letter he had written me. And he'd signed it simply, Los Dio Glenn. And I thought, well, I wonder what that means. And so I looked it up and I found out that it is what is inscribed at the top of the Washington Monument and it means praise be to God. And I loved it. I thought that was the coolest thing. And so I ripped it off and I started using it on my correspondence as well. Well, that was at the first part of 2012. And as the year wore on, there was a lot going on in my family. My husband had just changed jobs. And, and then my job that I had had for 28 years was not going well. So one day in March, I found myself sitting out on the bridge that covers, it was actually, we have a creek running through our farm. And I was out on the bridge over the creek and I was just sitting there praying and talking to God and saying, God, you know, something's got to change. Well, it was a Wednesday because I went to church that night and I told my friends, I said, you know, I, I probably should better be careful what I pray for. And you know, sure enough, the very next day in the middle of my traffic shift, you know, I was a traffic reporter in Nashville, Tennessee. I got a call to join a conference call and on a conference call after 28 years, I was fired. Kind of cold, but that's how radio is. And um, after getting over the shock of it all, I guess I was kind of excited about what God might be doing in my life. I was dreading telling the kids I teach at Sunday school though, because they thought it was really cool that their teacher was on the radio. And I actually had to teach that Sunday. And the lesson was all things work for good for those that love the Lord. And I thought, well, you know, I can explain to them how this is, this is gonna work for good. And so as I went into the church building on Sunday morning, um, I had that on my mind, but the first thing that I was met with was the news that my son's teammate and friend, Matt Waller, had been killed in a car accident the night before. He was just 16 years old. Now I found myself trying to teach the lesson, all things work for good, to a classroom of teenagers who had just lost a dear friend. It was a very rough morning. We grieved and we cried and we talked and we got through it. And at the very end of class, I did go ahead and mention to him, you know, hey, by the way, I lost my job last week or a couple of days ago. And I told him, I said, you see how insignificant that is? And they agreed. As we went through the week and said goodbye and went through the mourning process with teenagers, I found myself on that bridge again exactly one week later, praying to God and trying to sort through my thoughts about what had happened over the last seven days. And as my thoughts and prayers came together, they spilled out into a tribute to Matt called Los Dio, The Last Seven Days. Just a few weeks later, my husband started having some medication issues. Uh, he's a heart patient, it's a very mild problem, more of a nuisance, but they wanted to put him in the hospital to regulate his medication. And as we were making arrangements to do that, we got word that my husband's father had had an accident and broke his leg. Well, he was in very poor health to begin with, and um, no one was really surprised when, because of complications from surgery, uh, he passed away just a few days later. 
Clarence Vivio was 78 years old. We went up and spent time with the family and spent time honoring his life. And we had actually just gotten home and were making the final arrangements to go ahead and have my husband go in the hospital. It was again on a Wednesday and I went in and took him in to check him into the hospital. Everything was fine. He was gonna spend about five days in the hospital at Vanderbilt. So I went to church that night, spent some time with friends, had a great evening, went home, sound asleep, and the phone rings at 3 a.m. It wasn't my husband, he was fine, but it was my brother. My dad had had a massive brain hemorrhage. He'd been in the field the last two days. My family farms up in Western Kentucky. He seemed fine when he went to bed that night. But my brother told me they were now lifelining my dad to Vanderbilt Hospital. I got back to the hospital, had my husband on the phone standing in the emergency room, and he said, I see the helicopter coming in. He watched him land just outside his window as they brought daddy in. He didn't make it. And just two weeks and two days after we lost my father-in-law, my daddy died as well. Larry Wilson was just 73 years old. Losing both of our fathers, both of the grandfathers, so close together, left us all pretty numb inside. It was rough. And you know, I found myself back out on that bridge. <laughs> and again, my thoughts and my prayers mixed together and spilled out into a tribute to my dad and my father-in-law. Las Dio, the month of May. But you know how God will work things for good? My unemployment came in handy at the time. It allowed me to spend extra time with my mom, especially on Sunday morning, taking her to church for the first six weeks or so after daddy died. It was a tough summer. And eventually, I had to find a job, and I did. Not the ones I was hoping for and had been applying for everywhere, but I found a job, and I started selling cars. I was pretty good at it. Learned a lot, met a lot of great people, but I hated it. I was pretty miserable, actually. And um, as the fall, approached and I didn't see any end in sight. I just put one foot in front of the other and got through each day. And I gotta tell you, as the year ended, and I sat there and tried to sort it all out and figure out what in the world was going on in my life and trying to think past, think back over the, the, the year, remembering how much hope and how much excitement I had for what was possible in 2012 wondering what was coming in 13. All I could think of was good rings and our vocal lines that I shared with you earlier, punctuating them with Las Dio, my theme for 2012. I think used more out of brokenness than praise. But you know, I finally realized though, sometimes God has to lift us up out of brokenness before we really learn how to praise. And I never stopped calling out, and I'm thankful, because just a few weeks later, actually at the end of January 2013, just a year ago, everything started coming together for my journey here. A possibility that I don't think I would have even considered had I not finally gotten to a place where I was like, lost Dio, God, show me what you got, because I am out of ideas. And now, here I am in Dallas. Glenn Beck is my boss. And if you think this is the coolest job ever, you are absolutely right. It is pretty awesome. The lesson in all of this, don't limit God to what you're comfortable with. And don't blame God for the horrible things that happen in every single one of our lives because we're part of the fallen world. Things are going to happen. And when they do, God grieves with us. But don't be surprised when He takes those moments of complete brokenness to 
it teaches things, powerful, amazing lessons that maybe he's been trying to show us for our entire lives, but we were too arrogant and busy to pay attention to. I hope you have a wonderful year. And if you want to wake up your faith, I hope you'll join me again for a while away because my eyes and my heart are wide open and my soul is fearless. We have a lot of work to do. And it starts with the truth. God bless. Lost deal, y'all.